Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host, as always, is... Hello, I am Namio. Hooray! And holy shit this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, since since we had the habit of kind of watching a little bit ahead la- last time we recorded, we got covered a little bit, but we'll cover it again just to make sure it's all in the same damn week. You know, for completion's sake, I guess. Plus, it, uh, it all ties into what happens later in the week anyway, or at least a good chunk of it does. Yeah. Uh, first off, I want to start off with fucking Levi. God damn it, fucking Levi. Not only, I mean, it, it, they pretty much show that he dropped the accent just to call in the anonymous tip to the judge. Yeah. Which makes me wonder, either that's a really good American accent he's got going, or the Australian accent is fake. Could be Which, either one. Wait. Like- I can't figure out what his deal is, but yeah. And it's like, why, dude? Why? Do you want to have control of Maxie that much? That that you're willing to sabotage her life? I don't know. You know, that might be the reason. Because he's starting to uh, exhibit some uh, very, very controlling behavior. And he's been really, like, subtly doing his best to isolate her from her friends and family. Yeah. You know, he, he didn't want her to go see Mac and Felicia when she was so upset. You know, she's been trying to drive, he's been trying to drive a wedge between her and Nathan. Uh, you know, just like, just, just these little sabotages here and there, and uh, basically working to make her rely on him for everything. Yeah, and that's just, dude, that, there's a word for that. I can't think of it right now, but there is a word for that. It's controlling, I mean, yeah. Well, I was thinking something other than controlling, but we'll, we'll go yeah. with that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, and it's it's an abuser's behavior, is what it is. Oh, and, yeah. you, know, he, you know, obviously, yeah, I don't think he's crossed that particular line yet, but At least it makes me wonder... It makes me wonder if that's kind of uh, where it's headed. Yeah, I mean, how quickly did he deck Nathan when Nathan yeah. pushed his button? I mean, just I have to wonder. Just is, is he is this setting up for an emotional abuse plotline with Maxie? Well, not emo- well physical abuse, you know. And then Nathan has to be the White Knight to come in and save the day. I wonder if that's what's going on here with, in terms of the writing. I don't and know, although, so yeah. it, it's not too awful bad. I mean, it, it yeah. to, you know, bring in, bring him in as some annoying jackass, and then work your work the writing out to where he's more than just some jackass that fell off the turnip truck. Yeah. Or, or what? What trucks do they fall off in uh, Australia? The koala truck? The kiwi truck? I don't know. No kiwi truck. That would be New Zealand. Um. <laughs> oh. And that's probably very racist, but. No, it's Levi. Fuck him. Are, are Australians a race? Maybe. No, they're definitely a nationality. <laughs> well, you do have the Australian Aborigines, which he is not. No. No, he's like he's like Crocodile Dundee with more hair <laughs> and, and less friendly. Yeah. Although I although it would be awesome to see him blow up an alley, you know, blow up his breakfast with dynamite. <laughs> I, that 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 would be a good moment. For They'd have to work into the show, but eh. and and then later on in the week, Levi and Maxie talking in the park. Levi, you know, looks at the paper and gets wind of what Michael is going to do for the waterfront. And Levi is all against that because you know we're gonna have all these expensive shops and blah 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 blah. And and. He convinces Maxie to help him do something about it, even though Maxie, to her credit, she defended ELQ and Edward and Michael. Well, I don't, I don't think so much Michael because I don't think she mentioned him, but definitely Edward and ELQ and mentioned that Edward's last thing was to basically save Emma's life when the when the yeah. uh, thing hit 
back a few years ago. It's like I, I and that's something. It's like I knew Ed, obviously Edward had died. He, he obviously did because mm-hmm. the actor died. And and what had happened was that Edward, you know, he was sick and he gave his he was first in line for the antidote, then gave it to Emma. So and of course through all this, Levi is still being the cynical jackass that he is because it's like, dude. You know, you're jumping to conclusions based on what what your perceptions are and what your experiences have been. I mean, hear Maxie out. She grew up with these people. She grew up around Michael. And she grew up around, well, a little bit around Morgan. Not so much around Kiki. But yeah. she grew up in Port Charles. She knows these people. She, she has a pretty good idea what these people are like. You, you, Levi might want to trust her, but of course he can't because he's a controlling jackass. Yeah. Oh, but we'll, I don't. We'll get... I don't one hundred percent like understand his objection to the waterfront reclamation project because his his argument was that uh, like if rich people move in there, then there will be no place for the poor people. But I like the building that uh, Kiki and Morgan were working on was fucking abandoned. Mm-hmm. And from the sound of things, that's kind of the way the whole waterfront is. So what the hell? And it, I mean, if that's actually his worry, all you have to do is go to ELQ and petition Michael to build, you know, some low income housing and maybe a homeless shelter in the same area. And he'd probably listen. Yeah, because this is Michael we're talking about. The kid's got a big heart. You know, he wants to do he wants to do right. I mean, and especially building stuff like that that'll do really well for ELQ's image. Yeah. You know, stock prices would go up. People would have faith in ELQ. That's kind of what you want. So of course he's gonna do right by that. Uh, but no, since you know, since Levi is so anti waterfront reclamation because of what he perceives is going to be happening. He, they, he drags Maxie along to storm the brownstone, while Morgan and Kiki are working on restoring it, courtesy of Michael. Because, <laughs> you know, Michael gave them a job, gave him a job and a place to live, and Kiki is trying to – I think she either did or was trying to talk Michael into letting her stay there Yeah. as well because she – you know, Silas's place is pretty goddamn crowded. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, she's got to have a place to go so it's not so crowded, and – and so what I find interesting – what I find really really good in terms of the writing was that they didn't like try and make this whole sexual tension between Morgan and Kiki flare up or whatever. They're just they're just like siblings now. Mm-hmm. So – and I think that's really nice to show that, yeah, guess what? You can still be friends with your ex. Yeah, it may be rough for a little bit, especially if your ex acts like a stupid jerk. But <laughs> Morgan. Yeah. yeah. Uh. But it's – it happens. you know. It can happen. It can yeah. work. And it's like, hi, this is reality. I'm still friends with a couple of my exes. In fact, I talk to one of them on a regular basis still. So you know, it is reality. It really does happen. It's not a case of soap operas stretching the truth or whatever, which they do. They do, but this is not Just one of those so cases. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but this is not one of those cases. Oh, but speaking of Michael and ELQ, <laughs> Tracy, at first she is caught snooping around Michael's office and talking to Luke and conspiring and everything. And then, and, and of course, she tries, she covers her ass, says she's looking for a pen to sign the annulment papers. And Michael is questioning, and, and I don't think he truly fully believes her, but he goes along because he doesn't know the harm she could cause yet. Yeah. But he, at, least, at least he's questioning at this point, which is a good thing. He needs yeah. to question a lot more. <laughs> and stupidly, I, and I say, well, okay, I can't say stupidly because he doesn't know. He can't be stupid if you don't realize that somebody is a threat. You know, and Tracy being family, ELQ, a family company, which is supposed to be. Yeah. You know, you're supposed to be able to trust your family. And Michael, a little naive, admittedly gave Tracy the plans for the waterfront project because she wanted to see them. And having the signed annulment in his hands, which, you know, he's going to have his lawyers look over. <laughs> which, good. Also very, very good. 
you know, she has that. And last time we see her, she's on the phone with Luke, just just gushing and like, oh, I got it. Yee! Yeah. Yeah, it's like, wow. Oh, yeah. And Tracy is playing on, on, on that naivete. But it would be funny, though, if Michael kind of, like, realized it all along and gave her, like, fake plans or or did did something to trip her up a bit. That would be nice. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not holding my breath, but it would be nice. It would be. Oh, but speaking of of tripping people up, so we mentioned a little bit last week about Silas and Sam and, and um, Nina a little bit. Because Nina, as people have predicted, she's not really supposed to be in a wheelchair. She doesn't need the wheelchair. She can get up and walk around all on her own and kick things over and and even pick up pick up bits of glass shit and just toss them around, you know, and and break it. I forget what it was. I think it was like a plaque or something. She picked it up and just smashed it. And and of course the back and forth with the nurse. Or, or maybe the quote unquote nurse. I don't know if she's the real nurse or not, or a real nurse. Let me put it that way. You know, I, I love how every stage of Nina's plan, the nurse will like sit there and question and, and point out little holes here and there. And Nina is just so confident that she's gonna work everything out. Yeah, like I don't, I don't really understand Nina's plan at this point because, like. She's saying over and over again that she wants Silas to suffer. But, like, I don't really understand how anything she's doing is supposed to make Silas suffer. Like, she's trying to break him and Sam up by, I guess, getting in the way? Yeah, like, faking a fall and then calling him with the whole desperation in her voice. And to her credit, she sells it. She did. So to her credit, she does that, and and of course Silas has to run off, leaving Sam kind of having this awkward conversation with Patrick, you know, before they go out and start looking for clues and answers on who ran them off the road, and all of that, and and even before then, before Silas had left, they talked about, you know, they talked about her wedding ring, and she, they, it seemed like she really didn't think much about it, but at when, once it was brought up, she's like, you know what? You know, maybe you know it is time to move on, because Jason is dead, as far as she knows. Yeah. And you know, I mean, the ring is nice and it's a good memento, but you don't need to wear it. I mean, every you know everybody does does that. Even Patrick did when he thought Robin was dead. You know, eventually he took off the ring and moved on. Sam just moved on first without taking off the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But, you know, it, it's one of those things. And even Silas, when Nina was first poking him about it, he's like, you know what, she'll do it when she's ready. Yeah. And apparently, you know, he, he, he questioned about it. He talked, they talked about it, and she realized, hey, I'm ready. They talked about it. What a fucking concept. <laughs> yeah. More, more couples should do this. I mean, and, and even then, just the tension of that particular conversation alone could be enough to carry a drama. Because the because outside of Nina, you know that could that could end up really putting a strain on a relationship, even if you even if there's like full understanding of what's going on of of why she still wears the ring, and and all of that it could put a strain because, you know Silas and I don't think Silas in particular is that kind of a character. I could be wrong. I could be right. I don't know, but it would you know. And say for the sake of argument, Silas would be that kind of character. He would always, probably always feel like, you know, he's second best. Like he'll never, you know, she'll never love him as much as she loved her husband. Or still loves her husband. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, that right there can create some good tension without having to throw in all of this other gobbledygook. Without having to throw in the idiot ball all over the place. <laughs> so, yeah. Drama, you know, you know, drama, no idiot ball. That's how you do it. You know, and it doesn't have to be over the top. I mean, yeah, you can have over the top drama, and and yeah, you can have over the top drama without throwing an idiot ball in there. But you know, hey, uh, I don't know. Maybe the maybe the writers just really enjoy the idiot ball. Maybe it's like yeah, okay, you have an you have your idiot ball. Use your idiot ball wisely, please. Yes. Just just use it wisely, very wisely. 
Oh. And and so the next, you know, later on in the week, uh, Silas is like, you know what? I'm gonna get you to help walk again. And he, and the look on Nina's face is like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and she, he gets her to the hospital to an appointment. I don't. I haven't seen what happened since then. Um, they haven't showed that. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. So we don't know how that turns out. But if the Monday previews are any indication, she's still in the chair. At least I think it's a Monday preview. It might have been another over overarching preview or or promo. But uh, you know, she's still in the chair and she smacks the hell out of somebody. Nice. Yeah. So I don't know who it was or why. But hey. But yeah. does it really matter? Maybe. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. And the and the and there was a scene. At one point, uh, Nathan went to the. Uh, Went to the floating rib after having this fight with Maxie and uh, um, um, what's his name Levi. You know, just just go there, have a drink or whatever. And he runs into the <laughs> runs into the nurse who's there. Just Rosalie, yeah, Rosalie. Thank I you. I think that is what's going to get her busted mm-hmm. because I I don't think she knew who he was, but eventually he's going to like run into her and recognize her. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, she knows he's a cop, but she doesn't know that this particular cop is uh, Nina's brother. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> well, and you know, she she sat there and she had that drink with him, and she's like, "I have some place I need to be in fifteen minutes." Yeah. Fifteen so, minutes—that's yeah. long enough. You know. So, uh, you know. That's gonna, you know, it's, someone's gonna figure out that uh, she showed up late on purpose. Yeah, that that's going to come back and bite her in that cute little ass of hers. <laughs> and yes, yeah, for a moment, yeah. Oh my gosh, she's got a nice ass. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I gotta gotta have it every now and then. Well, you know, the there is that magical force field around Port Charles. It keeps out everyone who's. Unattractive. I don't know. I, I think Sonny and Levi are ugly as sin. Eh. But then again, I, yeah, I, I can also... definitely, I can definitely see uh, some women having, you know, thinking yeah. they have appeal. Yeah, and and even Obrecht has her appeal too. So you know. yeah. And speaking of Obrecht, oh my and, god, oh, what sorry. the fuck? <laughs> okay. Uh, the thing that I loved about Obrecht this week is, okay, so, you know, Britt asked her to help, you know, help her get Nicholas back. And Obrecht actually goes to the trouble of making a PowerPoint yes. about her plan. And I'm like, who does that? Even Britt was like, what? Why? I was like, the fuck? And some of the things she puts in the slideshow, like like among other things, somehow she got a still of Brit when she was banging Patrick in the shower. <laughs> and it's like, and even Brit's like, "What the fuck, mom? Oh, don't worry. I just, you know, these these people they like to have the hidden cameras. Uh, the person has been fired, of course, but not before I got this shot." Ah, <laughs> uh, and it's like, God damn. And of course, she she's got picture of Elizabeth up there, and that's when Nicholas walks in, who had told Elizabeth, you know what, I'm on the fucking board, I'm gonna get you your fucking job back. Yeah. And so and, he walks in with that particular idea of doing so, right as Elizabeth's picture is on the slide, and Obrecht covers, like, like nobody's business. Yes. And it's like, oh, shit. And, of course, the two of them start going <laughs> at it about Elizabeth's job, and Britt's like, god damn it, will you just give the woman her job back? And the thing is, is like, that's what I've been saying for a while, or, I don't know, however long, but uh, saying that, uh, like, if Britt wants to get back in Nicholas's good graces, the first, that's the first thing she needs to do is, you know, make a show of advocating for Elizabeth mm-hmm. to her mother. You know, because the whole thing is, you know, is she needs to prove to Nicholas that she's changed and that she's a better person now, now that he knows everything that she did. And if I think if she can prove that to him, 
she might have a shot at getting back together with him. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> but so, yeah, so, I mean, and that's what she does, is she, uh, you know, makes a big show and even threatens her mother with, uh, you know, if you don't give Elizabeth her job back, I'll turn my back on you and make sure Nathan does the same thing. The look on Obrecht's face, oh, shit. Yeah. You know, Obrecht is like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but, you know, and, yeah, Obrecht clearly understood exactly what was going on there and, and was playing along. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, they actually made kind of a good team. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although I like to think that Britt was honestly sincere and Obrecht just rolled with it. And just – because I, I highly doubt that was planned. Highly doubt. Well, no, it was clearly unplanned, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. And and it's like, there you go, you know? And and what Brenda said, she's like, you know what? I don't like her. I'm not a, she's not, I'm not her biggest fan, but you know what? She, you know, she doesn't deserve to lose her job. Yeah. You know, Brit has a fucking heart. Indeed. And, and technically, so does Obrecht in certain cases. Otherwise, um, the whole turning Nathan against her thing would not have worked the way it did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. And, and more on Obrecht. She – something that I have forgotten about and been neglecting, neglectful for is that she is a big fan of Franco. <laughs> who, who after you know starting the week, he's he's gone into jealous mode, and it's like I don't know if I like this, but the payoff, yeah, it's kind of weird. But the payoff towards the end of the week, I think, is a little worth it as long as they don't go too too far with it. Depending uh-huh. on depending on what they want to do with him, but but you know any any time that somebody just mouths off to Sunny and and is just there and just like calling Sonny out on all this shit and saying, look, bitch, I've got something on your ass. You best watch your step. And Sonny is so goddamn overconfident. Is it's, uh, it's like, dude, you are going to get yourself in so much shit. Yeah. And from the looks of things, he just might be. Because <laughs> last time I saw him, Franco had went straight to Michael. And what was what was the one thing they don't want Michael to know that Franco knows? Yeah. <laughs> I I think they're going to tease him telling Michael, and it's either going to play out as A, he's going to tell him and Michael's not going to believe him, but maybe plant a seed of doubt in his mind, or B, tries to tell Michael and for some reason doesn't get a chance to. And, and I love how some people when they're talking about this – they they're talking like oh he, okay he's going to ELQ to look for a job but he went to the hospital and got a job thanks to Obrecht and, and her gushing fanboy fangirlism rather yes because he yeah because he brought her uh, egg salad <laughs> <laughs> and we mean the painting yes uh, and she yeah uh, and she just gushed over it and and he's like you do realize that was my mother's painting right. And she's like, oh, that's whatever, random German. <laughs> and it's just, uh, and, and he convinces her to give him a job because he really needs one. After telling Carla, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get a job. Put on the suit, and just just go. And he gets it. And he goes to the park, you know, because I, I guess somehow he figured out Carly was there. Or, no, wait, no, he knows why Carly is there because she took Jocelyn to this. The summer camp where all these yes. where all the kids are going, and um, and so that's where he sees Sonny with his arms around Carly, not realizing that it's a friendly hug. That that point where he gets well, like overly jealous over Sonny and Carly's relationship. That's where I don't like it. Where I do like it is where he tells Sonny the fuck off, and he just says, "Hey, look, motherfucker, I know your secret. You." You step, you keep your distance, or I, I squeal type thing. It's like, yeah, you don't want to do anything to me. <laughs> uh, and Franco, for again, he's not as stupid as people seem to make him out to be. He's not an idiot. 
And I'm pretty sure he would have some backup way of getting the information out if something were to happen to him. I'm pretty sure. Oh, but the summer camp. <laughs> of course, you got Cameron and Emma and Spencer, and, and now Jocelyn is added into the mix. Which, it's funny. It seems like they're going to be trying to pair the Sparrows with Spencer and Jocelyn. Because it's like, you know, Jocelyn comes up, and I love how Sonny just seems to, like, point... Because the reason Sonny was at the park was to talk to uh, Spencer. Because Spencer's like, Uncle Sonny, I need your help. And Sonny gives him a speech saying, hey, you know, sometimes you just need to move on, you know? Yeah. You know, and which, I, I thought which, that was... Yeah, to his credit, it's good advice. Um, yeah, and it was it was really it was a really sweet conversation because uh, you know basically Spencer Spencer is still trying to win Emma back, and Emma's still kind of like no, um, and uh, you know he uh, he goes up to her and he he gives her uh, you know money and says you know that he started a, a fund in in Gabriel's honor, and uh, yeah. And there was this great moment because uh, uh, Cameron's like, yeah, maybe someday I'll start uh, something in Rick's honor. And it, and uh, Spencer goes, you mean for people who get shot trying to break out of prison? Mm, ouch. It's like, too soon, Spencer. God damn. Well, he's a kid. He doesn't know much better. But, uh, but still, it's like, ouch. God yeah, damn. It, and you know, and and Sonny and Carly are there, and they kind of you know, you know, sit him down, or like you know, you know, relationships change, and you know, sometimes it doesn't work out, and you can still be friends. It's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, that that was that was kind of the theme of the week. Yeah. And. Uh, and then in comes Jocelyn, and and they the the two of them have their meat thing and and Sonny just seemed like you know hey there's another one right there and i'm surprised carly didn't look at him like what the fuck you trying to push him on my daughter oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with spencer you know no. he's, he's a good kid he is. but yeah he, he, you know he's got some work left to do but he's generally good i do agree with that <laughs> but i mean i mean i don't know if 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 I was in Carly's place, and somebody tried to hook my kid up with some other kid. I would be like, wait, hey, 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 you know, let me do the job at least. Come on. <laughs> but uh, then again, I don't I don't have that relationship that Carly has had with Sonny, so he might get a pass for it. But speaking of – speaking of which, one thing we did I, – I don't think – I want to say it happened this week. No, that no, that happened last week because I remember frothing at the mouth over it, um, Ava, with the whole alcohol thing. Or, oh God! Oh, yeah, God. yeah. That is just goddamn. Although by the by, you know, by the time Ava's stuff is all finished up, she's calling somebody to get to Port Charles, and that was due to the fact that Nina is out of the coma, and she found out about it. And she's like, oh, shit. <laughs> and, of course, Nina is on Ava. You know, Ava is on Nina's hit list, rather. Naturally. And so yeah. is Kiki. Why Kiki? She was born. She exists. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, god damn it, Nina. I mean, okay. You know, being upset at Silas because he cheated on you with Ava. Justifiable. Yeah. Justifiable. Being upset at Silas and Sam... When you've been in a coma for 20 years and were, and your husband was told you were dead so he didn't realize you were alive, not to mention your husband was kept from you for all those 20 years. No, not yeah. very justifiable there. But then Nina is also crazy. So, yeah, she uh, really is. Yeah, it's just, just what the motherfuck? And it's probably her mother's fault, too. God damn. Well, they are related to Obrecht. Yeah. And we see how Obrecht is. <laughs> oh. But, yeah. God damn. So, uh, let's see. Where else, where else can we go? Oh, yeah. Rafe had a bit of more of a spotlight this week. 
you know, because well, it, it is pretty much it is pretty much all, all but stated that Rafe was the one driving the car that ran them yeah. off the road, and he goes to, to, he goes at first to you know he's, he runs into Kiki at home first and they have a talk and Kiki's realizing something is wrong. She's just not sure what. Yeah. And you know part of the issue is obviously you know you know uh, Molly. And I think Rafe did tell her that he took some money from her. He didn't say why. You know, you know, and her audio was well, he, because he, of uh, drugs. Rafe, Rafe told uh, Kiki that he took uh, money from Sam. I don't think he told Molly that. No. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> although now I'm wondering, was that money for drugs or was it to fix the car? Yeah, could be both. Let's see. When did the okay? I gotta remember. When did the money take get taken get taken place? I don't. Because it was like because if it was before the accident, then it was odds are it was drugs. If it was after the accident, then it was get, to get the car fixed. Hmm. But either way, it's like so he goes over to Sam's to you know confess that he stole the money, but she's not there. So he and Molly have a talk, and they, it seems like they start to patch things up and. And he's kind of growing in that respect a little bit. I hope it sticks. I really do. Well, yeah, because, you know, again, the the theme of the week was, for the love of God, let it go. <laughs> yes. Move on. Yeah. It's never going to happen. And so, um, you know, finally he apologizes to Molly for being such a jackass, and he appears to really mean it. Yeah. Which, well, of course, he didn't, you know, I'm sure part of it is also motivated by the massive amount of guilt he's got weighing down on him because, yeah. holy shit, I killed a child. Uh, I killed a baby. Oh. And, and and the last time I see him is when he's going to the crash site and he's laying flowers down and he's saying the the one phrase that, that he said to Molly earlier. I think, I think it was a, a phrase his mom said or something. Like flowers for the dead or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so um, what was it? What else? What else? <coughs> Excuse me. Speaking well, in amongst that uh, was Patrick and Sam. Mm-hmm. That's exactly where I was about to go. Yeah, um, uh, so and the... it's interesting because um, you know Patrick and Sam after after Sam and Silas's date uh, imploded, um, Patrick and Sam had had this conversation and. Uh, they had made a plan to go to the crash site to try and see if they could find any clues. Um, and one of the things I thought kind of, kind of was interesting, and I don't remember if I um, mentioned it last week or not, was the fact that uh, excuse me, uh, Patrick uh, talked to Sam about her taking off her wedding ring, and he was con- Conspicuously quiet about the possibility of Jason being alive, and uh, whereas um, you know when Patrick was getting ready to marry Sabrina, and Britt knew that Robin was alive, she tried to talk Patrick out of getting married. Patrick didn't, you know, do that with Sam. He didn't encourage her to not let go. Yeah, which I thought was kind of kind of interesting. Um, cause he, you know, he's flashed back a couple of times to when he, uh, demanded that Robin stop trying to help Jason and, and fucking come home. Um, and, you know, you can tell he kind of feels guilty about that because, you know, is Jason is Sam's husband. Um, yeah, yeah but, that's, uh, that's getting to him. Yeah, but he, he he didn't say anything, and he didn't try to talk her out of taking her, her wedding ring off. Um, but yeah, so yeah, <laughs> so they go to the crash site, and inevitably they find a fucking enormous clue that apparently the police just fucking missed because everybody sucks. <laughs> yeah, idiot ball back in the court of the police department again. God damn it. Because they basically they find um, a uh, highway barrier that's clearly been crashed into, and it's like feet from you know the place where uh, Patrick and Sabrina crashed. And I'm like, what the fuck? There is absolutely 
no reason the police should have missed that. I mean, it was, it, it did kind of, it, it, first of all, how do you miss that a chunk of highway railing is missing? How do you fucking miss that? Even in the dark, how do you fucking miss that? And it was barely off the road. It'd been like pushed like three feet back into the bushes. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Again, <sighs> again, idiot ball, police department. Very much so. Although, um, although on a, on a side note, real little quick thing was Anna gave basically gave Nathan his badge and gun back. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, and and of course he's lamenting <laughs> that he doesn't like the idea behind this because he's he's really feeling bad for Molly and and you know and of course you know most human beings would especially in his place uh, that, that oh god that has got to be um, yeah i i do not envy nathan no just no and of course they keep cutting back and and molly you know alexis pretty much ambushes molly to kind of talk a little bit and to give molly rick's effects and and in the, among them is a final letter from rick and 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 all of this and makes Molly do the cry and, and all the feels come in. It's like, mm-hmm. well, anyway, you know, it was nice of Anna to let Rick write that letter, you know, clearly. It, it, and she said he wrote it, um, on the way to, uh, on the way to the airport. Mm-hmm. So it was after, after he had seen Molly, uh, break down. Yeah. And so, yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's just oh god. I I hope they uh, they hurry up. Well, okay, they won't be over the summer because I think uh, Tony Geary is on his, has been on his uh, annual vacation, and so Luke Luke or fake Luke or any any role involving Tony Geary is going to be kind of off screen for the summer. So yeah. So this this will be a fall thing to look forward to. So we're gonna have to go a couple of months with. Alexis and Rick and well not Rick but Molly and everybody moving on and and then of course we find then we'll find out that Rick is really alive and everybody's going to be like oh my god yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah oh lordy 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 so where else where else have we not gone oh right we still haven't finished up on um Sam and Patrick <laughs> yeah uh, so the, yeah, so they find, uh, yeah, Patrick remembers, um, like, uh, kind of where, where the other car crashed. Sam has been, you know, uh, analyzing the tires and figures out that it's a sports car and they find some black paint on the railing that the idiot ball made the police miss. Mm-hmm. And so, um, there were only a few shops in the area uh, that, uh, could have, um, could have done work to fix the car, and so they go to one of them and, uh, you know, talk to the guy and ask, you know, and he, he remembers, um, a car that fits their description, but he won't give them the customer name because, you know, he has ethics. Exactly. And, and of course, Patrick being desperate, you know, he first tries to pay him, and and Sam is, and both of them are like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> well, and you know, and basically, all the guy wants is to do it above board. He said, "Come back with a warrant, and I'll be happy to do that." But you know, you're just some dude, you know, some dude and some chick, you know, with no actual credentials asking me for a customer's private information and it's not okay for me to give that to you without a warrant. Mm-hmm. And, and Sam's, Sam's like, okay, all, you know, all we have to do is take this to the police. We'll, we'll be back tomorrow. And Patrick loses his fucking shit. Yeah. Gets emotional. Let's the guy, lets the mechanic guy know what's going on, why they're looking. And that wins the mechanic over, which, why they couldn't have just done that in the first place, I don't know. I guess drama. But, you know, or or at the very least, you know, I, I, I don't think Sam, well, Sam doesn't always introduce herself as a PI, which in this case would be like, you know, would have been fine. 
I think, you know, you may still have been told to go get a warrant, but at least he would know that, yeah, you are actually investigating something for somebody and yeah. you are being paid to do so. Well, as as far as he knows, but, you know, she is doing a job and, you know, if she has to go get a warrant, she'll go and get a warrant, but. But at the same time, you know, Patrick, you know, he, he plays on the emotions. He's like, look, this this car hit me. It, it knocked me off the road. My my daughter could have been hurt. My my friend that was pregnant with my baby, and the baby was, had to go, you know, the baby was born prematurely, way too prematurely. The baby died. So we, wanna, we need to find this information so we can find out who did it, bring him to justice, that sort of thing. And the yeah, mechanic's like, okay, sure, you know, eventually. And leaves them with a the computer while he goes takes care of another customer. And Sam apparently f- sees you know exactly who the car belongs to, or at least who brought the car in. And she is shocked. And I'm willing to bet that at, at first when I when when I uh, saw this, my first thought was okay, he you know Rafe took off with Sam's car, but but how could but then you know with the whole paint thing i was like no that couldn't be possible because sam would have noticed it most likely oh you think it was silas's car i'm willing to bet Ooh. and that silas <laughs> silas might have noticed because i don't think rafe you know being you know high and coked up or whatever would have thought to take it to get redone i don't think so i think what would have i think what happened was Rafe ran Patrick and company off the road and got home. Silas sees, you know, that the car is scratched up and he's like, okay, I'll just get it fixed. Some tosser probably did it or what have you. And not thinking, not thinking any of the wiser, which, you know, that's going to be a thing. And, oh God, the fall of the confrontation from that. I'm willing to bet that's how it's going to turn out. We shall see. Yes. Of course, yeah, that would, that would be a way to, uh, Draw it out, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It cause drama. Yes. Because everything must be in the service of drama. Yes. Oh, uh, and and that actually, besides the idiot ball holding of the police, and 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 of course, well, even you know, even you know, with an impassioned plea like Patrick gave, I'm, I mean, even the most ethical people would have to be like, okay, you know what, you know, this just don't fuck up with it, that sort of thing. You know, I believe you. You know, that's that sort of thing lets you do it. But this is a way, you know, this is, I think, a good way to do the whole drama thing if you're going to do it that way. You know, if you're going to draw it out, if you're going to keep it going like this, this is a good way to do it. Realize, okay, you know, this is, this is how the twist turn is turning out. How are these characters going to handle it? Yeah. So I think this is a good direction to go, you know, writing-wise. Oh, and also, we mentioned at the beginning of the show that Levi and Maxie went to go and try and stop, or Levi went, Maxie just kind of was kind of dragged along a bit, even though she sort of is on his side, maybe? I don't know. Well, it's, it's kind of hard to tell. It's it, it really feels like she's more just going along with it because she feels like she should. Mm-hmm. But yeah, she is she is not emotionally invested in this course of action at all. I mean, that is abundantly clear. Yeah. And Levi storms into the brownstone to confront Morgan and Kiki, and and I could just see Morgan be like, what the fuck are you? You know, the fuck is this guy, Maxie? How, how, what the fuck are you doing with this guy? What the fuck? You know? Well, and my question <laughs> is, like, because that, that, that was, you know, one of the Friday cliffhangers was, uh, you know, them coming up and, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, Morgan is is talking to Kiki something about you know we're gonna you know fix this place up and Levi and Max are there and Levi's like and we're here to stop you and I'm sitting here going okay a they're not in charge no they are not so what the fuck are you doing and two yeah what is your plan what what like, what is your end game sir. Like, what What are you planning to do? And, like, if his plan was, like, to stop, you know, the restoration, like, Girl. why was that the first thing he did? Because I, I think, 
you know, it, it sounds like something that you would see play out in like an anime or a video game. You know, two characters talking, and then off-screen, Oh, I will stop you! Whether it's either a, a, a hero or a villain, or some two-bit passerby that thinks they're a hero or a villain. Yeah. Oh, you know, and in this case, I, I think it's going to be, this guy's just going to be a two-bit passerby. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope. Oh. So there was, there's that cliffhanger. There's also, you know, Franco going to Michael... And then, of course, Patrick and Sam finding out the make and model of the car that ran him off the road. Or at least Sam finding out. And yeah. then, of course, she's going to end up telling Patrick. Uh, but I, 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 I'm sorry. I still love the fact that Franco is sitting there threatening the hell out of Sonny. Like, like it's nobody's business. And, and Sonny, he, he's not he's, – he's just so cocky and overconfident. That is going to be his downfall. Probably, but like the and during that whole conversation, like Carly is just mortified, and you know, Rico keeps going on about how like the reason that he's getting so crazy about this is because he doesn't want to lose her, and then you know they do that cliffhanger where he's going to go see Michael, and I'm like, okay, I really, really hope this is a fake out uh-huh. because. Quickest, the absolute quickest way for him to lose her forever would be to go tell Michael everything. Yeah, that would be. Of course, you know, Franco is also jealous and emotional and not really thinking. Don't get me wrong. It would put Sonny in his place so fast and so hard, I would probably masturbate to it. But it, it would cost him Carly in the process. And that I wouldn't want to see. Yeah. It's just, oh, shit, man. Mm. And and I've got to say one more thing on the uh, the uh, Obrecht part for this week. One of – it's like I got the idea because Obrecht was comparing Elizabeth and Brit, you know, calling Brit – no, calling not Brit, but Elizabeth like this paper-thin waif or whatever. And then – up comes the picture of Brit in a bikini with, with with the cleavage and everything. And I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, you're saying that Brit's best bet to win Nicola, to get into Nicholas's pants is the fact that she has larger tits? Really? I mean, it's like, yeah, Brit's hot, but come on. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's not good. That doesn't mean that every guy is going to want to jump her bones, you know? I mean, I know a lot of guys would, and even some women, but eh. but that's neither here nor there. That's a purely sexual level. Nicholas still is not too awful fond of her. You know, I mean, he, yeah. I mean, he is grateful of the things that she has done, and and so far, and definitely grateful that she helped Elizabeth get her job back. But it's it's he's still you know over here I'm like okay I'm just gonna stay over here you know thank you but I'm I'm still I don't trust you you know it's a trust issue and uh, and a couple of things that we did also didn't mention about the floating rib was Mac being around of course you know bartender and he got the, he and you know Nathan gave Mac the news about the custody hearing which yeah. of course he's like why didn't you tell me and Nathan's like well we just found out today. Thought it was tomorrow. Judge pushed it back and told told Mac the whole story. And of course, while Mac is off, you know, calling Max to see what's going on, that's when Rosalie walks in and that whole scene happens and she's like, Where's the bartender around here? And Nathan is just like, Yeah, here, have my drink. <laughs> you probably need it. Uh, yeah. And they have their conversations conversation is like, you know what? If, if you know, if they keep Maxie with Levi for too much longer, it's they're probably gonna try and put Rosalie and Nathan together. At some point, if if Rosalie is meant to be more than just you know some side character, which I hope it's I hope not because she's she seems to be pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, I really kind of want to see what her deal is because you know so far like really the only character traits we've got is that she's kind of sarcastic and outspoken and she's doing this for money. Yeah. Sarcastic, outspoken. Um, 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 um. I'm gonna say, for lack of a better term, mercenary. You know, also looks hot. Mm, yeah, keep her around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I, I would like to see a little bit more of her, and and I don't mean sexually. 
in this case. I, I do mean I want to see her interact with more of the, with some of the other characters, see what happens with her, even when Nina is eventually you know exposed and and all of that good stuff, whether the damage is done or not. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so the well, the place they're fixing up down towards the waterfront is the brownstone. Now, the brownstone, I think I think uh, Morgan and Michael talked about it a little bit. That's where uh, Bobby lived at one point, uh, way back like late '90s, early 2000s. Uh, she lived there. I think, she, yeah, I think Lucas was there too. Lucas was still a kid at the time. Yeah, thank you, soap opera rapid age, aging syndrome. Yeah. yeah. You know, because Lucas should be well. Well, wait. Let's see. Lucas was born late '80s. Actually, if Lucas is anywhere close to around 21, 22, 23, then you know, like early to mid 20s in character, then actually that'd be about right. Yeah. So maybe not so popular rapid, rapid aging syndrome, uh, but but Lucas, at least until like more recently, he he didn't have a lot of limelight. You know, when when his character came out as gay, of course, he had his thing there. And then recently coming back after Carly had been kidnapped, and then he's around. And and now we have gay love triangle going on, practically. <laughs> uh, which, I want to see them do more of that. I, I want to see how this plays out. I really do. Oh. And at one point, um, you know, Franco going out in a jealous huff, he ends up at the floating rib to get drunk. And, and Mac, of course, tells him that, you know, to, I hate to reference it like this, but it's fitting. But um, it's it's like, you know, oh god, Sunny is is basically the heroine to a lot of the women around Port Charles. You know, you know, one of them is going to be quoting Twilight. Yeah. Oh, it was just, yeah, I know, I made the reference. I feel dirty. <laughs> I As well, you should. I should, but it fits. It really does, which is the sad part. Which is really the sad part, because he's a bad boy. He has money. He has power, but he's also abusive. You know, at least emotionally, maybe physically sometimes, but definitely emotionally. And it's like, dude, you know, and not to mention overconfident, cocky. You know, thinks he can do whatever the fuck he wants just because he runs the territory. It's like, no, motherfucker, you need to be taken down. Don't ne- maybe not necessarily killed. Uh, I don't necessarily want to see him die yet, but definitely taken down at this point. Yeah, I w- I root for him when he's doing his shit against Ava. I am all for that because Ava deserves what she gets. You know, like like him knocking the alcohol away from Ava and getting rid of the alcohol, all, all the alcohol in the house. I am on I am I am on his side on that one. Especially with the reason why Ava would be drinking while pregnant. So I am on Sonny's side for that one. But he, he's still again, I keep saying it, overconfident, cocky, thinks he runs the goddamn world. It's just no, no. He he just he just needs to go down. Just just you know, he's up he's he's up at the tenth peg. He need, he needs to be knocked down to about a three or a four peg. You know. That that's what you need to do there. That's all he needs to do. Just just knock him down a few pegs. Maybe make him lose his territory for a while. You know. You know. You go into mobster timeout. And and you think about what you've done and how the power <laughs> has gotten to your head. And maybe just maybe, you know, maybe you could start playing by the same rules you put on everybody else. You fucking hypocrite. Because you know he he is all about honor and being honest with him. But yet. He's not going to be honest with others, even if it – yeah, and, and there are some justifications. Like he can't tell Michael that he shot and killed AJ. He can't do that because he can't hurt Michael's feelings. But you know what? It's going to hurt Michael's feelings even more when it actually comes out from somebody other than Sonny. It's going to hurt Michael even more. That you know, like, why didn't you? You know, you could have, you you should have told me at first. Yeah, I would have been upset. And you know, and if you had told me the circumstances, maybe I would have understood. But you had to hide it. You had to cover it up. And you know, Michael and I'm, I'm sure Michael and Morgan would have a united front because Morgan's already like extremely pissed at Sonny. You know, that would just tip it over a little bit more, and Morgan would be like, "Oh motherfucker, really, really?" Ah. So yeah, when that comes out, Sonny's world is going to crash. I am going to enjoy it. 
I may even <laughs> masturbate to it. I don't know. But have yeah. fun with that. Yes. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of a lot of anti Sunny fans will do the same thing. Don't deny it. You know you will. <laughs> Oh, so I think that just about covers everything. Oh, and and one thing we did, I, I kind of missed, you know, if we can go over real quick because we're running low on time, is, uh, you know, Maxie went to see Lulu and they talked about the custody hearing and cured everything with the baby. So so they got so she held Rocco and everything was better and she felt better and, and which is kind of sweet. It's like, aww. No. He's like see see Maxi bond with the baby. Yay. Uh so there was that and then everything else. So uh so yeah. So I think that covers just about everything for this week. Uh this next week's hopefully gonna be good. Oh <laughs> um, so um we're gonna go ahead and get out of here for this time. Um uh, if we wanted to find Miss Namio on the interwebs, where could we find her? You could find her on Tumblr at uh, Namio's Corner, on Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn, on the unfabulous rtgoer.com, and on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. What? And if you wanted to find me on the social medias, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 X. You can find my materials on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. I also have a YouTube channel that I'm going to start putting up, YouTube-exclusive material. I have one up right now. It's Ooh. basically uh, – right now it's basically just uh, online battles on Pokemon X because um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying that. It's a bit difficult for me to do. Because I gotta actually do the camera. I don't have the little adapter that's on the three that somebody can mod onto the three DS to capture the footage that way, unfortunately. But you know, if 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 money willing, I can. I'll I will try and upgrade that one. And speaking of money, uh, yeah, if you like the shows that I do, if you want to help support the shows in any particular way monetarily. Then uh, head on over to patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. You can donate as little or as much as you want. Um, you know, if you donate, you know, five dollars or more, then you're you'll get either a guest spot on one of the sh- one of my podcasts, including this one, or I will do a review of your choice. And then that's the reason why I pick the review is twofold. One, you know, it gives you a little bit something in case you don't want to be on the show, but you still want to get something for it. There'll be that. And two It'll hopefully kick my ass back into doing some video reviews because I've still got one in the can that's been in the can for months. And I, all I really need to do is do voiceover and video clips, and that'll be it. It's just I've been lacking the motivation. So hopefully somebody requesting me to do something you know, at the $5 mark will help kick my ass back into gear for it because doing the video reviews is, is, is kind of fun. I just – you know, the editing, I've got to get back into the – get back into the uh, thing for. But – um. But yeah, but even if you don't want anything, you know, donate anyway, you know, if you want. Um, again, that's patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not mention my beautiful and wonderful and talented girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who has her own Ooh. Patreon page at patreon.com slash Becky Hop. It has links to her DeviantArt and her website all over there. Toss some money at her. You'll get some fabulous artwork. And if you She's toss... awesome! She is. And if you toss enough money at her, she'll do a 30-second animation for you. And, and it's worth it, too, because she is an award-winning animator. No joke. It, says so, it even says so on her site. Go check it out. Uh, again, patreon.com slash Hop, And, of course, mine, again, patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. And, if, and, of course, speaking of Patreon, uh, I'll be making similar announcements on my other shows as well. But if you look on my site, rtgomer.com, we do have a special menu for everybody that's on the site that has a Patreon, including myself, Miss Nightmare, um, Josh Hadley, and his two shows. They both have separate Patreon accounts. You know, go and you know, you know, go check them out. Toss money at them. Toss money at all of us, really, because we could use the help. Because for some of us, this is going to have to be become something viable. Because I, I know, especially in my case, I've not been able to get some kind of a day job for over a year, and I've been trying my balls off. So this this may be a thing of maybe have to make or break me. And 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 I hate that it's come to this point, but it's it's getting there. It, it's pretty much there. So, you know, to keep the lights on, to keep the shows going, to improve the shows even. 
you know, because there's already been little improvements here and there, and that has been thanks in part to Patreon. So, so it's so the money does go towards making the shows better. So, so that 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 is a promise. So, so yeah. <laughs> With all of that done and all my rambling and whoring out is done, uh, again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.